This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Kentucky morning start here on WKYT, even after a tough night of storms. It was a long, loud night, right? Oh, it was. Lots of thunder and lightning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. It's Wednesday, May 11th. It is. And now at 630, devastating images are coming out of western Kentucky, where a tornado destroyed homes and businesses. Some victims are saying they're relieved after learning of two arrests in connection to a string of arsons in central Kentucky. And a group of Richmond police officers will be leaving this morning for Washington, D.C. They're going there to honor a fallen brother. Still a loud morning for many of us down in southern Kentucky, especially across the 27 corridor, Science Hill to Somerset. Somerset to Burnside is a loud start to the day and that is all moving toward Laurel County. I'm going to talk about a flood warning and also when you can expect these storms to move on out. That's coming up. All right. We need them to clear on out of here. Video of the damage speaks for itself this morning. It's going to take days for people out in western Kentucky to clean up the damage caused by a tornado. Yeah, at least 10 people were injured by the severe storm in Graves County. This morning we're hearing from survivors. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk this morning with their stories. Good morning. There are so many stories of heartbreak this morning as families try to save what they can from their destroyed homes. While those stories of loss are very difficult to hear, there are also incredible stories of survival. I was running down the road like a chicken with his head cut off, I guess. I got on the other side of that building is a swimming pool and in front of that pool is a big tree and I was just hugging that tree for life. He says that tree saved him from this tornado. You can see it whipping up debris as it carved a path through Mayfield in Graves County yesterday afternoon. Ten people were hurt, but no one was killed. When you take a look at just how powerful that storm was and how it ripped through homes and businesses, you can understand why so many people say they're lucky to be alive this morning. They were back actually over this area right over here where it collapsed. And you'll see the gentleman over there. Uh, and uh, he, he urged them to get up here under this other part, which had a steel beam, and that really helped out a lot. Now this morning, people are starting the very long process of trying to figure out where they will go from here. First Baptist Church in Mayfield is being used as a shelter for the many people who lost everything in the tornado. From the Live Desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Now it's a similar scene in Breckenridge County near Elizabethtown. Intense storms shattered windows and splintered wood. The severe weather brought flash flooding in some areas with high winds and nickel-sized hail in one others. A uh, barn was blown apart, leaving boards stuck in the ground like giant toothpicks. It actually had a two-by-four stuck in the top of our garage. Cleanup from the severe weather is expected to take days. Storms also caused damage in parts of southern and eastern Kentucky. Today, the National Weather Service is planning to survey damage in Taylor, Russell, Adair, and Casey counties. Leslie sent us these eyewitness pictures from Wolf County. The emergency management director there says trees fell on a few homes and some roads in Campton and in Lee City in that area. Some roads were also covered in high water, and a lot of folks there have lost their power. No injuries have been reported there. Wolf County schools are closed today because of the power outages and the continuing dangerous road conditions. Storm damage also reported in parts of Madison County. Lisa Stone sent us these pictures from the Charlie Norris Road area that's east of Richmond. Trees fell around a few houses and also on some cars. There were also reports of hail and some high water on some of the roads for a time. No injuries reported there either. This could cause somebody to be late for work this morning. A tree has fallen onto a truck on Fairfield Drive off Clays Mill Road in Lexington. The tree is partially out in the road, so it's a bit of a pinch point there, but the street is open to traffic. Some of us uh, dealing with the storm cleanup this morning, there is a chance of more storms, unfortunately, in the forecast. Yeah, WKYT meteorologist Mike Harris is here to help you plan your day. Mike? Yeah, we still have some of those showers and thunderstorms down south, and all that's moving eastbound. Now, here's the problem. These are areas that were hit hard yesterday. These are areas that left tremendous amounts of rain in some spots. You work your way into Pulaski County, right across the 27 corridor. You go from Science Hill to Somerset, Burnside, and Burnside Marina. All that is traveling eastbound, and that'll take you right across US 80 all the way into Laurel County. Laurel County, you'll be feeling this storm. Now, nothing severe on it right now, 
mile. But you'll actually be filling this here in just about 30 minutes. So heads up London, heads up Corbin as you uh, continue to go throughout your morning. Next 30 minutes, it's going to roll right into Laurel County. The breakdown for today, chance of storms will be in the forecast. It's mainly south and southwest. I say mainly, not fully, okay? So we still have kind of a small chance of rain across central north and western zones. That's during the daylight hours. Then we hit the night. Here come some storms for the north and the central zones. That does include Lexington. Are we looking at any severe storms out of this? I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. Hopefully this uh, pattern flips soon. Yes, <laughs> sooner than later, we'll right? Some dry days. Then now this is a story we've been following for a few weeks now. Some of the victims tell us they're relieved knowing that two people have now been arrested in connection to a string of arsons. A lot of people are on edge, and this morning one of the suspects is going to be facing a judge. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live in Jessamine County with the latest on that. Caitlin, good morning. Good morning, Bill. In just a couple of hours, a man police believe is to blame for that recent string of arsons in Central Kentucky will walk into a Jessamine County courtroom. Now, many are relieved this morning after that man and a juvenile were arrested. It was a joint effort between local, county, state, and federal agencies to arrest 38 year old John Roth and a 17 year old. State police are saying Roth pawned items in Nicholasville on Monday morning after they were stolen from a home that was set on fire on Jacks Creek Road in Madison County. That home makes the sixth home in central Kentucky. Police say it was recently burglarized and then set on fire. Trooper Robert Purdy says the six fires happened in five different counties beginning at the end of April. This homeowner we spoke to lost everything. I mean, why someone would do this, I, I don't know. Obviously, there's, there's issues or problems with this person, and, you know, hopefully that this is the end of it. The juvenile arrested faces second degree arson and burglary charges. Now, as for Roth, he's charged with receiving stolen property. You'll notice he's not charged with arson. We're, we're told more charges could come. He's expected in court at 830 30 this morning. Live in Jessamine County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you very much. Two people were killed after being hit by a train in southern Kentucky. That happened last night in Somerset at the West Columbia Street crossing. Investigators say a man and woman, both of them in their 20s, walked right into the path of an oncoming train. The coroner says the woman died at the scene and the man later died at the hospital. Their names have not been released this morning. Some scary moments overnight for a group of Jackson County high school students after their bus was hit by a truck. That happened on 25 East near Barberville. Police say no one was hurt, but the driver of the truck was arrested on prior warrants. This morning, a group of Richmond police officers will leave for our nation's capital to honor a fallen officer. Officer Daniel Ellis was killed in the line of duty last fall. This weekend, his name will be added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. More than two dozen Richmond police officers are headed to Washington for the ceremony, along with Officer Ellis's family. It'll be an honor that, to know that if you, know, if you ever want to go, you know, it's always there. Family, anybody that takes a trip to D.C. can always go by and see it. Other events are planned in Washington as well, including a candlelight vigil on Friday and a wreath lane ceremony on Sunday. Well, a new retailer is moving into Lexington's Fayette Mall. Clothing store Torrid will be opening up this fall. This will be the first Torrid store in Lexington. There is one at the outlet shops of the Bluegrass in Simpsonville. Fayette Mall says construction will start soon. And the store will be between All Sports and Sephora in the Macy's wing of the mall. Another option out there. For yes, shoppers. the mall has grown over the years. <laughs> really I couldn't has. believe it. I lived, I grew up here and, you know, moved yeah. back after being gone for right. 10 years. It was so different. Right. Just huge. Well, it was a major expansion uh, yeah. some years ago. And then, you know, then you have all of those uh, out parcels as well yeah. around the so mall. So many changes. Yeah, it keeps going out there. All right, our time this morning is 639. Let's check to see how traffic is moving along this morning. And here's Officer Don with our check on live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. On the inner loop of Manowar, just past Richmond Road, there are two cars involved in a collision. It uh, shouldn't be a big issue getting past them. Just make you aware of that if they're still there and that's part of your route. Inbound Richmond looks okay. The slow traffic's in the left turn lane to the inner loop of the circle. Let's get a look outside and we'll show you what's happening as far as traffic flow this morning around the city as uh, things start picking up for rush hour. On the north side, we're okay. No major issues to report there. Uh, any red we have showing up really on Nicholasville Road as we zoom, zoom in, but that's still not too bad approaching 
approaching the circle and down uh, towards Southland Drive. Downtown itself looks good as well. Drive times this morning, uh, if you're coming in from Nicholasville, we're still holding about uh, 12 to 13 minutes from Versailles is 10 minutes in Frankfurt, 27. All that looks normal. Now back to the studio. All right, Don. Thank you for the report and all you do for us here at WKYT. We appreciate it very much. 6:40 now. WKYT this morning on the way with so much more. Even moms in the animal kingdom will go to great lengths to protect their little ones. Find out the extraordinary steps this goose took <laughs> to get help for her little baby. Aww. Still some noisy weather down south, and that continues to make its way eastbound. It's not really calming down anytime soon. When does that move on out? Do we see more storms today? I'm going to have that coming up in just a few minutes. And as we go to break, you're looking at downtown Lexington this morning as the city comes to life on your Wednesday, and it's so good to have you with us here on WKYT This Morning. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a really loud go at it down south early this morning. We had some rumbles overnight. Rumbles came flying through Lexington right around midnight, woke me up. And these rumbles last for a long time. I mean, the, the one this morning, I mean, you were talking five to 10 seconds of just constant rumbles. And that's exactly what we're seeing. No severe weather. Uh, going on right now. Now we do have a, a strong cell just made its way through Somerset. This is going to actually head right along Highway 80 and also 461. 461 will actually take you into Rockcastle County into Mount Vernon. Highway 80 goes toward Laurel County uh, there in London. You're going to see both of those areas be affected by this storm, especially if it sticks together. We'll see if that sticks together, but I do believe it'll have enough punch to actually move off next 30 minutes or so. So heads up Livingston, Southern uh, Rockcastle County, you're going to be rolling through this here in just about 20 minutes. London Corman area already seeing some uh, pretty ominous clouds sliding on through as I've seen that on Twitter. On Twitter, uh, Johnny Nicholson actually sent me a picture of uh, what looked like a shelf cloud off in the distance. Yeah, but some pretty ominous weather down south. Like I said, no watches outside, no warnings. We haven't had a warning for several hours. So most of this just some heavy downpours and also some lightning. Temperatures there in the 60s. So if you're walking outside where you're not seeing the rain, actually feels pretty good. This model is actually hand handling this pretty well, and it has been the past few hours. So we're pretty confident in this. Watch this, okay? Daylight hours, daylight hours. It's going to be totally different from nighttime. Who sees rain? Who doesn't? So, so daylight hours. Look at your hour by hour. Here's noontime. Not much going on. Still a couple of showers back toward east and southeastern Kentucky, but that's about it. Okay. Then we get into the afternoon. There is a boundary that's set up right through here. Every single weather model is showing this. Remember, I was talking about this yesterday, where weather models they were not agreeing on timing. They were not agreeing on what was going to happen. Uh, but nonetheless. When you start to get those agreements with all these weather models, then it makes you more confident in the forecast. So we're pretty confident that the best chance of rain today is going to be closer you get toward the Cumberland region. Daylight hours. Then we get off into the night. Look at midnight. Look what happens. Here comes a piece of energy sliding up the Ohio River, heading our direction. Northern half of Kentucky heads up. That looks like the best shot. Uh, just after midnight, there's 3 a.m. Uh, to get some of these thunderstorms. Remember, only isolated severe chances for today. That'll take you into tomorrow morning, and only isolated severe chances tomorrow. It's no widespread severe weather like we saw yesterday. Uh, but nonetheless, Thursday, we get more showers, more thunderstorms rolling on through, some heavy rain. My main concern the next 48 hours will be flooding. Because grounds are very saturated, not just from yesterday, but the past several days. Okay, so just keep that in mind. With that marginal risk of severe storms, obviously that's the lowest end that you can actually have. Enhances what we had yesterday, but today and tomorrow it'll be a marginal risk. So just keep in mind you'll get some strong storms here and there. Let's talk about your seven-day real quick. Today and tomorrow are your wet days in the forecast. Remember, tomorrow uh, still looks like the better opportunity to actually see some of these rumbles of thunder in the forecast. So it, it looks like today is about a 40% chance of rain, mainly south of I-64. But tomorrow looks like a pretty good chance, about 70% chance tomorrow is what we're going to be expecting. Friday, guys, looks like the break in the forecast. That's what we're going to be expecting. So if you're looking for a break, Friday is going to be it because Saturday, here comes some more chilly showers and thunderstorms. <sighs> Ready to put those rain boots away. I would love Micah. To. Come yeah, on. But you know what? Here in the next couple of months, we'll be begging for rain. Uh, we'll be asking for I don't know about that. Through, yeah. But uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah I don't think so. Be. We'll look forward to Friday <laughs> one way or the other, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Now, police up in Cincinnati, they came to the rescue of a feathered family in trouble. 
Sergeant James Given says he was parked near a creek when a mother goose started pecking on his cruiser door. Eventually, she walked away, but she kept looking back, so he followed her. Sergeant Given says the goose led him right over to her baby. It was all tangled up in some string that was tied to a Mother's Day balloon. Now, Givens and a specialist couldn't get any help to come out, so they took matters into their own hands. Well, she has a couple kids of her own, and I guess that motherly instinct must have kicked in because, uh, like, they communicated. The, the mother goose didn't bother her or anything, and so uh, specialist Sharon came and uh, untangled it. You know, it took her a while because it was all wrapped up. Oh, special Sharon was able to free the, the goose after the rescue. The mom and her family joined the rest of the family for a swim in the creek. A great How story there. Yeah, well, that mother goose just pecking on the door trying to save her baby. Right, as you say, the mother's instinct, both uh, by the mother goose and by the specialist who, uh, you know, knew what to do. So it's kind of moms working together in that situation. They say it kicks in. <laughs> I believe it. Good story there. Our time is 6.48 on WKYT this morning. Great to have you with us. And our top stories are on the way. Yeah, we have more news when we come back. Coming up, we're at a Massachusetts shopping mall where an heroic off-duty officer stopped a deadly stabbing spree. Plus, we report from Capitol Hill on Donald Trump's challenging effort to unite the GOP. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Welcome back in to WKYT This Morning, 6.52, and we're just a few minutes away from CBS This Morning at the top of the hour. Folks in western Kentucky are continuing to clean up this morning after a tornado caused a lot of damage. In Graves County, a tornado was caught on camera. Randall Reed was outside when he saw this tornado drop down. He shot the video on his cell phone, and at the time, Reed says he and his coworkers weren't too worried about the tornado damaging their business, but looking back, he says it's scary to think about. He saw the tornado hit a business about 500 feet away from where he was. I don't think it ever registered, you know, it ever really registered how dangerous it was because I seen it hit a building, what it did to the building. Police say at least 10 people were hurt during the tornado. They say it also knocked out power and knocked down dozens of trees. We do have some school closings this morning because of last night's storms to tell you about. Wolf County schools are closed today because of power outages. And Leslie County just announced it's on a two hour delay. And today, the National Weather Service plans to survey damage in Taylor, Russell, Adair, and Casey counties. With more storms in the forecast, download the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Ten years after being injured in a hit and run crash, a Lexington man says he is still waiting for justice. Ronald Willems has been confined to a wheelchair since being hit by a car on Versailles Road back in 2006. Police say the driver, Carmela Velasco, did not turn herself in until a few months ago. A grand jury indicted her on misdemeanor charges. Willems thinks the charges are not strong enough. I can't imagine not getting a felony indictment. For leaving somebody on the road to die, which is basically what she did. Valesco's attorney planned for her to enter a guilty plea to the charges, but a judge wouldn't allow it. Instead, she pleaded not guilty and will be back in court next week. New this morning, deputies say they found more than 100 marijuana plants growing inside a Madison County home. The sheriff's office says it was called to a home on the old Red Lick Road for a domestic dispute. Now, while investigating, deputies say they found an extensive indoor marijuana growing operation. Deputies arrested the two people at the home, Christina Lanhart and Franklin Frazier. Forget uptown funk. The Alaska Wild is grooving to the smooth music of wind chimes. Britta Schroeder shot video of a moose playing one part harmony with the wind chimes on the porch of her cabin near Denali National Park. Now, Schroeder heard the chimes, but it didn't look windy. The chimes continued to sound for two to three more minutes. Then she heard the thump on her porch and noticed the moose. Good tunes there. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> That's his tune, right? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so. So it's pretty good. 6.54 right now on WKYT.com. Clean up underway in parts of Kentucky after those storms, including the tornadoes that rolled through. State police telling us 10 people injured when a twister came through in Graves County. Now, we've posted the video online of one of those twisters as it went through Mayfield. And our weather pattern, Micah says, remains bumpy for the next 48 hours or so. His forecast 
forecast is updated online, and you'll find our First Alert Defender Network and real-time observations as well as we're looking for calmer conditions. We have more details about the arrest of an adult and juvenile in a string of arsons in central Kentucky. You can read up on how police think they have ended that series of fires that had so many people on edge in their own homes. Bernie Sanders pulling off a win in West Virginia, but still trailing Hillary Clinton in the delegate count. Kentucky's primary is coming up next Tuesday, and the Clinton blitz will continue. Former President Bill Clinton will be making three stops in Kentucky tomorrow. We have his scheduled stops up on our website this morning. Kentucky.com with more details about the supermarket giant Kroger's plan to hire 14,000 workers around the country. Many of those jobs will be part-time. An out-of-the-world story this morning, NASA verifying the existence of almost 1,300 planets. CBS This Morning is on the way at 7 very shortly with your eye opener. And, of course, we'll have local updates. Hey, join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram. And for the latest news anytime, you know where to turn. WKYT.com. Yeah, those strong storms down south continue to put down very heavy rain. London, you're going about to get in on the mix here in about 15, 20 minutes. Livingston, you're going to be next in line. Mount Vernon, you may get clipped, but for the most part, it stays just to the north of you. But, yeah, it's one thunderstorm after another and one right over Dunville, too, heading through Casey County. And this is actually heading toward, once again, Somerset, Science Hill, there in Pulaski County and Eubank, you're going to be next in line too. Here's the breakdown for today where I expect a couple of thunderstorms later on this afternoon during the daylight hours down toward the Cumberland region. That is your best bet to actually see rain today. Tonight, guys, around midnight, a few more storms moving in the central and northern states. Possible dry day Friday, right? That's right. <laughs> yes. Hold on for that. Nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you for being with us on WKYT. Have a great day.